The U.S. House of Representatives returns to work today with all eyes on Speaker Mike Johnson after months of wrangling over Ukraine aid. He's promised to finally put the Biden administration's $60 billion support package up for a vote. Ukraine desperately needs more military support, with President Volodymyr Zelensky saying this week Kyiv could lose the war against Russia without it. DW's Nick Connolly has this report on the struggle to shore up Ukraine's eastern front against advancing Russian forces. February 2024. Outgunned 5 to 1, Ukrainian troops pulled out of Avdiivka. The Russians not only had many more soldiers and shells to send into battle, they also had planes to launch heavy glide bombs that can rip through fortifications. Ukraine couldn't go all out, but it didn't know when the next tranche of US military aid would arrive. That withdrawal from Avdiivka has become a symbol of what happens when Ukraine's Western supporters are distracted. One senior Ukrainian partner described what happened to me. He said that, you know, our men fought as long and as hard as they could. We ran out of ammunition and the Russians just kept coming. And I think without supplemental assistance in 2024, you're going to see more of Divkas. Russian troops are making progress, even if it's slow. The US-based Institute for the Study of War estimates they've taken some 300 square kilometers since the start of the year. Speaking to German broadcaster ARD, Ukrainian spy chief Kirill Budanov predicted that Russian forces would step up their campaign with a major offensive in early summer. This would leave Ukraine at best two months to prepare. According to Budanov, Russia wants to take the remaining parts of Donetsk region still controlled by Kiev, focusing in particular on the key logistics hubs at Kramatorsk and Pokrovsk. That makes the next few weeks in Washington crucial says Ukrainian military expert Oleksandr Musienko. If we don't get more ammunition and resources, we are going to see the Ukrainian army slowly forced to pull back as Russia makes the most of the situation. It's not just the Donetsk region that's seen an uptick in fighting in recent weeks. Kharkiv just 35 kilometers from the Russian border, has seen missile strikes intensify as presenters on Russian state TV call on their army to wipe the city off the map. But many analysts aren't convinced that this means a Russian ground offensive is actually on the cards in Kharkiv. Russia will, I'm sure, increase its attacks in Kharkiv. I think we will probably see them concentrate some troops near the border to make it look like they're ready to attack. It's all about forcing the Ukrainian army to spread itself out and draw down troops from the east. With aid still stuck in Washington, some military sources in Kyiv have been giving ever more alarmist briefings. And even if you don't take these at face value, it is getting much harder just to hold on to territory. Ukrainian forces are digging in behind the front lines, using what they have. Their leaders can't plan much further ahead than that. A year ago, Ukraine was asking for Western aid to help retake Russian-occupied territory. Right now, all Ukraine can hope for is to prevent more Avdiivkas. And Yuri Sak. He's an advisor to the to Ukraine's Minister of Strategic Industry. Yuri, welcome back to DW. Now, at this point, how likely is the prospect of another Avdivka? Good morning. <clears throat> well, indeed, what we're seeing is um, the Russia of the guided bombs at Kharkiv. They use also types of uh, artillery and uh, Kharkiv actually is um, at the moment the epicenter of these uh, bombings. Um, by the look of it, they, the strategy seems to be to turn Kharkiv into another Mariupol, into another Avdiivka. And this is exactly why our political and military leadership on a daily basis is talking to our partners with the view to securing more air defense systems, more um, uh, air defense missiles, uh, and of course, you know, sooner or later we will uh, receive the F-16s, uh, which again will uh, complement our air defense system and will make it a little bit more difficult for the enemy to use uh, these gliding bombs. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, we don't see any signs of Russia stopping, and um, the situation is uh, very, very serious.
Um, with the U.S. Congress convening today, some lawmakers remain hesitant about aid levels to Ukraine. What would be your message to them? My message to them would be that I personally meet almost every week different uh, delegations from the U.S. Uh, many of the people I meet are uh, politicians, even congressmen, and they are Republican. And uh, my mind breaks because when I speak to these people who visit Ukraine, who see it with their own eyes, um, they support Ukraine. They want the U.S. Congress to vote in favor of this bill. So quite frankly, um, my mind just cannot understand uh, why we're seeing what we're seeing. And of course, we hope we hope that uh, the uh, political situation inside the Congress will change in favor of voting for this bill because it's critical for us. Mm -hmm. President Zelensky has warned of a Ukrainian defeat in the war if uh, Congress doesn't approve more aid. How big a sense is there in the country that, you know, despite all your efforts, it doesn't control its own fate and future? Um, we know and our partners know that this war has never been just about Ukraine. This war has always been about the desire of the Kremlin, of the terrorist state Russia, to destroy the world order. So this is why we have always been pretty much warning our partners that, you know, if Putin is not stopped here in Ukraine, which is still possible um, if we all step up our efforts and if the um, ammunition arrives on time, if other weapon systems arrive on time. So if it is not stopped here, it will spread further west. Mm -hmm. You know, the Eastern European countries, the Baltic states, they understand this risk very, very well because they're just next door neighbors to us. Um, we will do all we can and all we have to, and we will never stop fighting for our ser territory and for the shared values of uh, Europe and world. But again, it's time for all of us to step up our efforts. That was Yuri Sack, advisor to Ukraine's Minister of Strategic Industries. Thank you so much. Thank you.